starring Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. to do any more paddling. Well, that's enough window shopping and daydreaming. Gosh, Gramps, I'd give anything to have that. Me too. Yeah, people will always give anything to have something else. Now it's getting late and we better go home because I've got an awful lot of work to do. Come on. Wasn't it shiny, though? It's the prettiest thing I ever saw. What is the matter with you two? One would think you had spring fever. What are you mooning over? An outboard motor, but you wouldn't understand. Oh, only a man could understand, Mrs. Miller. I see. And how much is this beautiful, super shiny motor? Almost two hundred dollars. We'd have to be millionaires. Well, it certainly doesn't hurt to want things. Just to sit and sulk when you can't have them isn't going to do you any good. Well, we're not sulking, Mrs. Miller. Just sick about it, that's yeah. all. Well, maybe someday you will be able to afford it. So then you'll just have to be patient. Why does everything have to wait till someday? Why can't we have the things that we want now? Yeah. Well, because the time between wanting and getting is the most important time in our lives. That's what makes people productive. That's what makes them work and gives them hope. That's all we're doing, hoping. Well, look, I'm hoping with all my might. Besides, you'll learn that very often the things you seem to want the most aren't half as important when you finally get them. She just doesn't understand. Yeah, my mom's like that, too. What's the matter? You two look like a couple of sick calves. They're thinking. <laughs> Looks more like daydreaming to me. Speaking of calves, I was just talking to Dan Cooper, and he says he's going to have a calf scramble in his field next Saturday, sponsored by 4-H. Uh, you two are still members of 4-H, ain't you? Yeah. Well, then prick up your ears now. Well, what do we want to scramble a calf for? It might be profitable with a lot of good, honest labor. Oh, please, honey, not in the sink. I'm draining my spinach. Oh, ah, well, uh, not very dirty anyway. As I was saying, there's four calves to compete for, donated by the farmers. And the kids that uh, can catch them and put a halter on them, get them to keep. Well, that sounds like fun. What's so profitable about it? Well, if you'll show a little interest and listen, maybe I'll tell you. Now, come alive. Now, these are choice suckling calves. And if you take care of them and groom them and feed them right, by spring they'll be... Heifers. And don't that mean anything to you? You mean we could sell them for money? Yeah, the better the heifer, the more it'll bring on the hoof. Especially if it won a blue ribbon at the spring fair. How much would a blue ribbon heifer bring, Gramps? Well, about, uh, I don't know, say about uh, $200. $200? Well, of course, it ain't as easy as it sounds. First, you got to catch your calf. And then there's only four calves against eight boys in the field. And after that, there are months of care and work, yeah. if you do get one. We could do it. The two of us together. We could go halfsies, and then we'd have our outboard motor. By spring. Now, you all know the rules. You've got to catch and haul your calf, and drag him across the finish line. Once a boy has caught a calf, no other boy can interfere unless the calf gets loose. All ready, Cliff? All right, turn him loose. Ready, set, go.
Oh, you did, boy. Jeff, I'm so proud of you. Glory. Looks like Lassie figured the turf prize. <laughs> That's good, because you'll need all the help you can get. The fun is all over, and you two kids got work to do. First, this little creature has to be weaned. She doesn't have a mother around to feed her. Yeah, and that's just the beginning of it. She's got to be groomed and watched and fattened up. Now, do you think you're up to it? Sure we are, Gramps. All right, get her in a stall and go get some milk and stop fattening her now. I got chores to do. I'm half a day behind already. Come on out, Ford. This is your new home. Yeah, and we're your new mothers. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on out, Ford. What you doing? Turning her around. What for? Well, you just got a new home. Do you like to have your nose up against the wall so you couldn't see anything? What's there to see? Oh, just so she gets used to things. It's all ours. Well, I guess we'd better feed her and then get her a fresh bed of hay. Yeah. Then we'd better scrub her down. She's awful dirty. Yeah. Isn't she a beaut? Most beautiful thing I ever saw. <laughs> Come on now, outboard. She's not gonna get fat this way. Carla, you just gotta learn how to drink milk. Since you don't like my finger, you got to take it out of the bottle. Now, that's all there is to it. You've been trying that for hours now. Boy, did you ever see such a stubborn animal? She just don't understand, I guess. You don't look much like her mother, maybe. Hey, do you think we can try? Come on, Lassie. Just show outboard how to drink out of a baby bottle. Well, come on. You drank out of a bottle when you were a baby. At first, anyways. Come on. Now, you watch this, outboard. All you have to do is like Lassie. Yeah, watch Lassie. Come on. Come on. There, you see, outboard? There's nothing to it. And once you get used to this, we'll give you a whole bucket full. All you gotta do is eat. Thanks, girl. Now just do like Lassie. She's drinking. Yeah, and I'm getting hungry. Okay, Porky, let's see how much she's grown. What'd you measure last time? Let me see. 35 inches. Okay. Golly! What's the matter? It's only 33 inches. She's lost two inches. Where'd you measure? Well, right here. You're measuring her neck, Dopey. You're supposed to measure her withers. Oh. What is it? 36 inches. Boy, she's grown a whole inch. Over 200 pounds. Wow. How's the cattle business? Outboard's putting on weight. I wish I could say the same for you. You know, I'm mighty proud of you and Porky. You're doing a good job. Thanks, Gramps. See, do you think she's getting enough salt? And maybe I ought to get her some special vitamins. Well, are you following the book? Yeah. No, I wouldn't worry about it then. By the way, where is on board? I didn't see her in the stall this morning. She's out grazing in the field. I took her out early this morning. Oh. <laughs>
This will be a nice, fresh bed for outboard. <laughs> what you doing? Making a new bed for outboard. Where is she? I tied her up in the field to graze. Lassie, go get outboard and bring her back like a good girl. <laughs> Sure, you boys don't want to go to town with me? Yeah, we're awful busy, Mr. Miller. Well, search yourselves. <laughs> Where's she been? Golly, I don't know. I sent her to get outboard. It looks more like she went wading in the mud. Well, she must have been down by the lake. Lassie wouldn't go to the lake if I sent her to get outboard. Lassie always gets her for me when she's been grazing. Then that board must have been grazing down near the lake because it is. Get the rope. She's stuck in the mud out there. I don't want you to get stuck, too. Now, give me the rope, and you hang on to it. You, too, Pokey. Get a hold of the end of it there. All right. Eh, that ought to do it. Egg Nabbit. Going to town overalls on, too. She's coming. Yep. Uh, She's uh, it down in that mud like a cement block. We did it. Ooh, I'll never be the same. She's all right. Yeah. yeah. And none too soon either. Five minutes more, she'd have been over her head. Mm, poor outboard. Oh, come on now. Stop mooning over her. Take her back to where she belongs. I gotta get changed. I'm soaked to the skin. <laughs> just like my mother. I'll bet she weighs 800 pounds, too. My mother don't weigh that much. I meant outboard. Oh. And your Graham said if she wins a blue ribbon, she'd be worth over $200. Well, that means we can buy our outboard motor and still have money left over. Yeah. Well, I sure hope someone buys her. <laughs> What's the matter, girl? Maybe she's hungry. She's not like you. Boy, just think of us going all over the lake. With that motor, we can practically fly. Yeah, as long as we don't have to paddle. Get her all ready for the fair tomorrow, huh? Do you really think we have a chance of winning the blue ribbon, Gramps? Well, I don't see why she can't. Outboard's a good-looking heifer. Yep, mighty fine. Should be a good price, too. Just so it's <laughs> enough. Yeah.
You young fellows ought to feel mighty proud of yourselves. Well, we are, Mr. Cooper, but we never expected to win first prize. Well, don't you think this critter ought to get a little bit of credit? She had something to do with it, too, you know. And don't forget Lassie. And now Mr. Kimball here has something for you boys. He's the cattleman who bid for your heifer. Well, I guess the next thing is for me to present you boys with my check. $220. Golly! Wow! Oh, Lars! Well, you certainly earned it. Big cattle auction over at Capital City tomorrow. She'll bring top market price. I'll just leave her in the stall for tonight. Pick her up first thing in the morning and take her to auction. Pretty soon, she'll be just good roasts and steaks on some people's supper table. I can't believe it. Me neither. It's been a long time. Remember when she was just a little tiny calf? And we fed her out of a bottle? Yeah. I better be getting home for supper. Yeah. I've got to eat pretty soon, too. Really hungry? No. Me neither. I'm going to be getting home. See you. So long. Come on, girl. There's nothing we can do about it now. Good morning, dear. You're up early. Good morning, Mom. Gramps. Good morning. Didn't you sleep well, darling? <laughs> Not now, girl. I'll get you your breakfast. They're going to kill outboard. But, Jeff, that's why cattle are raised. You know that. I didn't raise her to be killed. Anyway, she's not just cattle. She's family. You sold her, Jeff. Got your money. Well, no, I don't know if... if I want it that bad. Sometimes you think you want things awfully bad, and then... And then you don't know if you really want to pay the price. That's a difficult part about life, Jeff. Not knowing how much we want something until we've lost it. Well, what can I do, Mom? <sighs> I really don't know, Jeff. I'm afraid it's too late to do much of anything. Mr. Kimball carted her off to the slaughterhouse early this morning. You heard what he said. Probably all over with now. It's outboard! Well, I'll be... Well, it can't be! It's outboard! Why, well, she couldn't have broke loose and found her way back. That wouldn't be possible. Lassie must have gotten her. That's why she was trying to wake me up last night. To tell me outboard was home. Thanks, girl. Golly, well, we couldn't do with that. Oh, isn't it a beauty? We could build anything with it. 
Maybe even an airplane. All right, let's go home. Enough window shopping and daydreaming. Gosh, Gramps, I'd give anything to have that. Me too. Yeah, I know. I've heard that before, too. And there you both were, with the money in your hands, and you give it back to Mr. Kimball. But that was different. Yeah, that was a lot different. Yeah, everything's different. Now we better go before you get into trouble. Lassie can't always do your thinking for you, you know. <laughs> Well, come on, girl. I guess Gramps is right. Yeah. Yeah.